If your score is around 400 level, don't despair. Watch this video till the end. This method is a proven method for any standardized exams. Even if you are studying for the GRE or the ESA or any exams, this method works. First, accept that you need a long-term commitment. If your score level is low, it means one thing, you need to study. You cannot put your score beyond the 700 level in short term. Accept that you need some time to study. I recommend that you devote at least 6 months of study starting from today. Now that you are aware that you need time to study, the next important thing is planning. Did you hear what I said? Stop listening after you said we need a plan. I want to ask you, if you are a CEO, would you manage your company without any planning? No, that's the worst thing a CEO can do. Planning is crucial in every business. Likewise, plan your study for the next 6 months. So how do you plan? I've seen many students do an impromptu planning. Before starting a day, they think, okay, today I will study quant. I feel like I want to study inequality problems. Oh ho ho, that's a highway to failure. Don't do this. If you plan day by day, you will end up compromising yourself with your version of acceptable amount of study time. Planning for studying is not the same as deciding what to eat impulsively. The purpose of the planning is to achieve your goal, and in order to achieve your goal, always plan from a big picture. Discern which area you are able to boost your score in short term, and which area you need time to study. For example, if your major is in STEM, that is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics, you'll be familiar with math, and you can get a very high score in quantity reasoning in short time. Or if you're major in the arts, like humanities, social sciences, or liberal arts, where many essays are done, you will probably excel in verbal in short time. Always spend more time on the area you need to improve on. Plan wisely and you will get a balanced score in the GMAT. So for the first step in planning, plan to cover all basic stuff in the GMAT. Focus on getting concepts solid. Only when you are able to connect one concept to another can you get beyond the 600 level. Many difficult questions often mix up two or more concepts. The third step is keeping an error log and revisiting errors. I cannot emphasize too much on keeping an error log. If you are not keeping an error log, start now. Many students are like, I don't know how to solve this problem. Let me look at the solution. Hmm, ah, now I know how to solve the question. No, that's a major cognitive trap you just fell into. You feel like you understood the question by looking at the solution, but really you didn't understand it. You just became familiar with it, not understand the concept. So keep an error log, and when you revisit these problems after several days, make sure that you can solve that without looking at the solution. Don't time yourself while revisiting your error log. Focus on mastering the concept with confidence. This step is especially important for all quant and sentence correction problems. The fourth and last step is practicing to increase your speed in problem solving. This can be done in many ways. You can practice to manage your time by spending more time in practice exams, or you can time yourself whenever you solve a problem. If you can solve within 2 minutes for most problems, you are in good shape. So in summary, overall planning should be like this. First 2 months, focus on studying the basic concept. The next 2 months, focus on revisiting your error log. The last 2 months, practice your pace and quickly solving problems. Now if your score level is around 500 or 600, then you can shorten this time period. But the step to the high GMAT score is very similar for everyone. Basic concept, error log, and then simulating your test environment. I hope you found this video helpful. Please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. If you have any questions, please comment below and good luck with your GMAT study.